Hello and welcome to the Bellhops Tabletop. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, what we are doing, I'd like to welcome you to my tabletop here in my game room. I am here with my wife, Deanna, and we are about to crack into the hot new Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion box set. So I did open this up, which actually, if you want, head over to YouTube and look for my unboxing video and you can see the contents of this box. Uh, neither Deanna and I have played this. I haven't even read through the whole scenario book. I just, because it got to a point where it said stop reading and play. So I decided to experience as if I was a new player to this, which is the important thing to know. Both Deanna and I are not new to Gloomhaven, but we are new to this. Uh, we like to live stream our Gloomhaven games on Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Uh, with the worldwide pandemic, that doesn't happen every week, but we try to stick to a, a, a schedule on that. So we have played a number of Gloomhaven games with uh, another couple, friends of ours, Tori and Kat. And for those of you who are used to seeing us here, we do apologize due to the pandemic. Um, Kat works as a frontline worker, so uh, we are it's just not worth the risk um, getting together with that couple right now. Though we do miss you guys. So we are going to break into Ju Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Uh, we are streaming this live on Twitch, and we do have the, the chat room open. So if you are joining us on Twitch, welcome. If you have any questions, comments, please point them out. Especially if we make any rule mistakes, it's possible, uh, despite the fact we played Gloomhaven a number of times. There are some minor rule changes in this game, so there is a chance we may miss that using the basic Gloomhaven rules instead of the uh, Jaws of the Lion rules. Plus, it's just there's so much going on in these games, it's easy to make a mistake. Now, the first couple scenarios kind of walk you through things pretty simply. So, at this point, you're going to get to experience this as we do. Deanna hasn't even seen what's in the box yet at this point, except for the fact she's sitting next to it. So, she's seeing it for the first time. What I will be doing is moving the camera eventually, or a couple times. Like at one point, we're going to put a sticker on. I think I'll move it up for that. And then, once we actually start playing, when we have the map on the table, we'll adjust the camera so you just see the map, so you don't have to keep looking at us all night. At some point... Um, we can get up to two cameras you'll be able to see both which would be awesome the best way to do that and help us do that is head over to patreon.com that's patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop i would love to get a second camera down here so that we can see us and our reactions and the table at once but right now that's out of our budget so enough about that we are going to move on so the one of the things that comes in this and i'm going to pretend like no one's ever seen this box before so the first thing they give you is a welcome to gloomhaven sheet uh, which is an excellent sheet that actually goes through and actually says stop read this before you do anything else And it, it's nice because it actually has a whole there's way more components in this game than you may be used to and here's ways So one of the first things that work welcomes you through is how to package everything So it actually t gives you a number of ziplock bags and tells you what to put in them And then even tells you how to divvy out a tray So now I've done most of that work already I haven't set up all the different things, but I've got the tokens set up and so on so that's the first step it does. And then it tells you, uh, it warns you not to open any of the sealed packages. So in the box, there are some sealed packages. It's a legacy game. Yeah, it is a legacy game. So there's lots of sealed stuff. I don't think there'll be any spoilers in this first episode, except for the scenario details. We're not opening anything up tonight <laughs> at this point. Um, then it also does note out, if you do want to watch a watch play video, you, there, Rodney Smith has done one, so there's a great QR code here. The next step is to move over to, got to find the right book, the Learn to Play Guide, which is a significant book. We're looking at a good 31 pages here, so that's almost as much as the original. And it says, Welcome to Gloomhaven, and it explains that it's a fully cooperative game. It tells you whenever you see an exclamation mark on here to do something. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get out the scenario book. So we will do that. Its front cover contains an introduction. Which will kind of, I know, we're, we're getting glare off the white text here with the, with the light. But trust me, the light's going to be better once we start playing. And it says the first thing we're going to do is we're going to keep playing it until we're successful. We're going to unlock scenario one. So right now they want us to go ahead and read the front cover of the scenario book. Do you want me to do that? I don't yeah, care. Do it will be good to get back to the sleeping, sleeping lion. After a fortnight going up and down the still river, chasing a bad lead on a missing blacksmith, you can almost feel the warmth of the inn's hearth when Gloomhaven's walls come into view. You are almost home. To be fair, it's not just the blacksmith. An alarming number of people within the poorer districts of the city have gone missing. Usually nothing comes of it, though. Just another poor soul forgotten out here on the edge of civilization. The blacksmith's wife, Sandy, however, managed to somehow scrape enough money together to hire you to find her husband. You're not sure where the money came from, but no matter the source, it couldn't have come easy, which makes it doubly painful to return to the city empty-handed. 
True, Sandy was a little late on the payment, but you are the Jaws of the Lion, one of the most well-known mercenary groups in this backwater dump of a town. Surely it can't hurt to take a charity case every once in a while. Getting good jobs is about maintaining a reputation, after all. Which is why you really need to get to the bottom of this and not return to that widow with nothing but the calluses on your feet. Also, you probably shouldn't call her a widow to her face, at least not until the fate of the blacksmith has been confirmed. Given, however, that none of those who disappeared have returned, the outlook is grim. As these cheery thoughts pass through your mind, you notice movement up ahead and immediately draw your weapon. The sun has dipped low in the sky, reducing visibility, but you can clearly see some ramshackle wooden barricades blocking the road in front of you. And sure enough, as you cautiously approach the scene, vermlings jump out from behind the obstructions, flashing crude swords and sharp sticks. You have to admit you are quite tired from the day's journey, but still, those oversized rats certainly picked the wrong group of travelers to ambush today. You are the jaws of the lion, after all, and are always ready to show there is only one outcome for anyone who dares threaten you. If you haven't yet, read the first section of the Learn to Play Guide before continuing. Done. Keep going. You're missing the whole thing. Where? The whole what we get to do next. Rewards. New location. There you Roadside go. ambush one. So we have our first reward. So we are going to grab the map of Gloomhaven, which is probably Ooh, going so to be teeny. the glare of Gloomhaven. And we get to put on sticker one. So here we will roller coaster people in for a bit. And it says B1, so I'm assuming that's where it goes. And we will try to get this so it's not too glare. Actually, that made it worse. So we have our Gloomhaven. We are going to put a sticker on B1. Is it supposed to line up? You try to get the art to light up. The art to line up. Yes. No, you have it upside down. You're about to put a sticker on upside down. I'm about to put a sticker on upside down. Okay. Well, the words went that way. Look at the word Gloomhaven. The word Gloomhaven and this word would be the same oh, way. Okay. Hence, that would all be right, right, right side up. Fine. It looked Thank like you. you had it upside down. My bad. You're welcome to do this, you know. I don't see how this lines up. I really don't. It doesn't line up with the art. I guess. Well, I could do it yeah, if you prefer. Go right ahead, because I'm covering over the tower. There's well, no tower to replace it. I don't know. Oh, unless it's supposed to yeah, line it's up way with over the letter there. B. Yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, guys, live on camera. You can see just how goofy I am. Uh, all right, there we go. It actually lines up. It's outside there of the city. There we go. As we are, which we are makes sense. We are outside of the city, so I don't know if anyone can see that. It's just super glare. I apologize. What I need to. Do. Let's not have this on until we start. There we go. Look, we have our first encounter location just added to the map right here. So we have taken our first step on our journey as the Jaws of the Lion. I dig the map. Now it says, see, like you skipped right past it. I You're did. like, I just ignore the, the important part, yeah. the rewards. Who wants a reward? All right, so now that we've done that, so to start, perhaps you've noticed this in the scenario book, and it says that there's a reward. This means to take the first sticker from the thing and put it in the B1 square. Now I'm going to read, not going to read this word by word, but I'm going to show you. So at this point, this board is going to show every scenario we've ever unlocked. So every time we sit down to play Jaws of Lion, we're going to look at this and try to find a scenario on here. Well, right now we're stuck with scenario one. So we are going to try to do scenario one. Next, we are going to choose which character to play. So we are going to have some choices here. So we have the bomb, which is the demolitionist who is specialized at melee damage and obstacle destruction. We have the red guard, which is protection and monster manipulation. Interesting. We have the void warden, who is healing and support. And we have the hatchet, which is raged damage and looting. And I will let you pick first. Mm, that's a hard choice. I think I'm going to take this guy. Monster manipulation sounds interesting. All right, monster, do we want healing or do we want range? Do we want melee? This sounds too similar to me playing the crag cart with the object destruction. Though it is the one the I love opened bomb. up. It's the love bomb. <laughs> the love bomb. Uh, I think you should take that one. That one? Healing and support? Yeah, Maybe I don't know. Support or take character? the hatchet. Take whoever you want. All right, so we're going to take the box. And we also get a little box to go with it. Oh, the excitement of a miniature. 
Can I open this? And what I will do, again, I apologize for the roller coaster. We'll jump this back so you can kind of see us checking these out for the first time. All right. So I would say spoilers, but technically they're kind of not because all of these are like, halt! Halt! Do not open these. Phenomenal. I love this miniature. It's one of Try to show that if you can. I want to see all the flames, but you know what I mean? Can you see it? No, it's all washed up, unfortunately. That's too bad because it's a pretty sweet mini. There we go. You can see a little better now. I'll leave it at that setting. I have a woman with a book in his ass. When you get your card out, you can read the back of it. Volva, red guard. So you will not need this. You will need the character card. You'll need an initiative token, which is on the punch boards, which I don't know what you do with the punch board with the initiative tokens on it. It was the one I took back here. But... No. Is it this one? No. 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 Well, that's it? No. It's there. Oh, I thought that one was empty. There you go. Alright, so what are you? Redguard. Volrath. I'm blind. Hatchet, Void Warden, Demonologist. It's the one that fell out, it looks like. Because one fell out somewhere, which is bad. Excellent. No, red guard. There you go. There you go. Red guard. And I need Boy Warden. They say you're going to read the back here. Yeah, I'm not going to read it out loud while you're uh, talking and doing things. I can just read it to myself, I guess. No, I was asking <laughs> you to read it out loud. All right. Though their demon-like qualities make them feared by many, Volraths are for the most part well-mannered and gentle, prefer preferring to solve problems through diplomacy rather than violence. They come from a dark and bloody heritage of genocide and warfare, and as they have become more civilized, have simply made concer concerted efforts to put their past behind them. Volraths pride themselves on being able to integrate themselves peacefully into human society, often becoming wealthy merchants or influential politicians. Not every Volrath can be peaceful, however. There is a specific caste in the Volrath capital of Jinda tasked with protecting the city. It is a prestigious position and one not easily lived up to. Outcast from Jinda for unknown crimes, the Red Guard found it too difficult to part from their identity as a protector, keeping the distinctive red armor as well as their chained sickle and shield. The only place to find work was as a mercenary in Gloomhaven. And maybe, just maybe, by standing on the front lines and keeping their allies from harm, the Red Guard will find some way to redeem themselves. Not in the eyes of the Jinda culture, which has permanently turned its back, but at least within their own esteem. All right, and I have a human Void Walker. Humans are by far the most dominant of the races, spreading across the continent like locusts, erecting extravagant cities and disturbing slumbering forces they can never hope to understand. The human society is one of rules and regulations, but also one of great diversity. Due to their intense curiosity and res relentless nature, humans can find themselves walking almost any path imaginable, from the obscenely wealthy noble to the unappreciated tavern cook. From the blacksmith forging rugged weaponry to the corrupted pursuant of dark magics. The void is a dangerous and terrible place. Anything that enters it dissolves into a coarse black sand without explanation or remorse. After a near-death experience with the void as a child, which scarred the left side of their body, the void warden made it their duty to protect others from a similar fate. Being touched by the void has left more than just physical scars, however. They can channel the power behind the Void to manipulate the thoughts and actions of both allies and foes. The Void Warden can also offer powerful boons of healing and stamina, but those gifts come at a terrible price. Alright, so what we don't need is there are going to be packets that say Halt. We do not need those, and we do not need the character sheet at this point. Another difference between this game and Gloomhaven is there is no party sheet. 
We are the Jaws of the Lion. Period. We're not naming ourselves. There's, yep. As far as I know, no reputation. So the next thing you will need is your deck of cards, which should be set already. And should be the same as mine, but they are class-specific now, but they are the same. So you have your set of so attack no cards. No sharing. So I'm actually going to keep that. You will also need these deck of cards. From which you need the summary card. You don't need the summary card, but you will have a summary card. And you're going to take all the cards that say A. There should be six of them. And I swear these cards are three times slicker than the ones in Gloomhaven. Yeah, they want to fly right out of my hand. So not the Bs. Not the Bs or anything else. All we need Damn. is the As. And the rest you can put back in your character box for now. Yeah, they really want to limit your choices for the yes. beginning. Yes, the, 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 on, the onboarding is completely different from the other. So the other option we had with two players is we could have each played two. Yeah. But it kind of recommends against that. Plus, we're already playing the full Gloomhaven game with a four-person party. Mm -hmm. um, you will also need a dial, so anyone who's played Gloomhaven will recognize these to track your experience and your health. We each get a dial. All right, next, the play area setup. So here's where we're going to switch things. So you're going to take your player mat, your player reference, 6A cards, attack modifier deck, and hit point dial in front of you. Uh, the red side should be set to whatever your 1 is, which is 6 health for me. I get 10 health. Fuck. And 0 experience. We're not even going to worry about experience at this point. It's tragic. Um, the character initiative token should be placed near the center of the table. So there's, they're, they're there okay. for now. And now we're going to open the scenario book to scenario one. So here's where I'm probably going to move the camera again and get that out in front of us. So we're going to put this away. So we are going to start somewhere over here, but we'll read that in a bit. So let's go through the next step. So now we place our character on any of the starting hex options. So there are a number of, we're going to, I kind of want those to be the camera, but I don't think you'll be able to read them anyway. They're very tiny. Um, so we're going to start in any of these spots. That looks good to me. Yeah, are you melee? So you probably, you don't even know yet, right? Um, I have no clue. Yeah. I look buff. So now, grab this Ziploc bag of Vermling Raiders, which I didn't put them in a Ziploc bag because I knew we were going to need these. So we have a bunch of Vermlings here. Somehow all this got mixed up back here and fell over. Oh, that's quite a few Somehow I'm missing one. There it is. Yeah, the de the cards are definitely slipperier. So we have a bunch of Vermlings. And what we are going to do is we're going to look at this. And so this is also very different from the last game. So the top bar is if we're playing with two players. Okay. And if there's a white, it's a regular. If there's a, a gold, it's an elite. Okay. So we Oh, are and gonna... that's where you place it. Yeah, so and that's place... where you just place it. And then here the black bar means none? None. Because so we're only playing two one? players, yes. Interesting. So we have a Vermling here. And one here. And a gold one goes over here. And one more white one and that's it. Okay. So that's it. We only have four? Mm -hmm. All right. So we put now what I didn't do is the Ziploc bags. Did I put those back in here? So no, they're over here. Oh, oh, the empty bags, yes. Yeah, I should make the Vermling bag. Somewhere is the Vermling initiative token. That is tiny. Yes. The colors, uh, you can tell by the color, right? Sort of, except you're red and they're red. Yeah, but their words are red. Mine words are oh, there less you go. red. All right. So again, I'm just going to go through in the order it's telling me to do. I, I want to jump ahead because I played before, but um, smaller cards are not needed in this scenario. So we're going to put the stack card into one of the sleeves, which we have here, which we'll try to keep in camera somewhere. But we got to read some of this first, but I'm hoping I can put it somewhere mm -hmm. where you will be able to read it. Probably up here would make sense. No, that would be off camera. I'm checking what you're covering when you put it there, and that seems like, yes, that's fine to cover. So that. we are setting the Vermlings at level one. So the level at the top, sorry, level at the top corner. And then their stats are going to be 5, 1, 2. So 5 health, 1 movement, 2 attack. 
for the regulars, and the difference is 10 attack for the elites. And what I need to do that I realized I hadn't done is improve the, light back the lighting back here. There we go. Do hey, do, look at that. Do you have that. to adjust any settings now that you change the lighting? No, but it's you, you. We washed out some of this, but the board's even better. I think the characters are even easier to see at this point. Good. Something's in the camera so here, but that's not that big a deal. This goes back. This goes somewhere. We'll decide where it's going to go for tracking the Vernley's health. Um, mm -hmm. Put the monster standees in the stands. Shows the monster. We did this. Black icon means no monster. All right. So there's a lot of information. So there's the scenario number one, the title. Where we are on the board, it says supposedly. I don't know where map that is. Map layout two, three. I don't know. It says city map board location, but I don't actually I see don't that. Actually see oh, that. B1. Oh, yep. Okay. B1. The goal, so our goal is kill all enemies. The scenario key, which lists which monsters are needed, which shows over here. We just need Vermlings. The map layout, we see it. The introductory text, read this now. The road back to Gloomhaven has been long, and now you get attacked by vermlings when all you want is a warm meal and a soft bed. Well, it makes you mad. Mad enough to kill these mangy creatures before you collapse from exhaustion. Of course, the vermlings have other plans. They gibber about wanting your coin and the meat in your bones. Nasty things, really. Best to ignore their ranting and end this quickly. Then it says special rule text. Read this after the introduction. Make sure each character's starting hand consists of their six cards marked A. Yep. The Vermling Raiders will act on initiative 50 each round. They will first move their base movement 1, then if a character is adjacent, adjacent to them, attack 2. So this is huge compared to the original Gloomhaven. So they're normally in Gloomhaven, there's monster decks, you have to worry about monster AI and everything. They have wiped that out for this first scenario. We don't even care what the monster initiative is, it's 50 every round. So that is a big difference from the original game. And so much easier to teach people how to play. There's the conclusion text, but it warns you not to read this yet. Uh, and then there's rewards. So if we succeed, what will happen? Note these are tips. So as you see stuff, you should read them. So this says, place your starting characters in these spots. Um, this is in the rewards. I don't want to read this. So this notes, it says, it's a hex. It's a, it's a rock with green around it. And it says, tip, all hexes with green border are obstacles and cannot be entered. The demonolo or I always want to say demonolo demolitionist can destroy them though, at which point you put a destruction token on it and it becomes a normal hex. So that's interesting. So I wonder what they would do in this with no overlays. So instead, you just put destruction tokens on them. This one is tip. Remember the icons for setting up monsters on this hex. No monster is placed for two characters. A normal monster is placed for three characters, or an elite monster is placed for all four characters, which. We already covered that. All right. So in this scenario, green borders are obstacles. You can't enter them. And walls are dark lines, which are the very edges. And that is what we need now. So now there's how to play the game. So Deanna and I have played before, so I'm just going to go through this really quickly. We have a hand of six cards. We are going to pick two of those cards to use every round. So these are my hand of six cards. I am going to pick two of these to use. So it actually recommends the first round, which I may not do it. But it's recommending I choose... Suggestion and Wicked Scratch. So those are these two cards. Of these two cards, I am going to decide... Okay, this cable's just in a bad spot. I am going to decide which one I want to be my initiative, and I'm going to put that on the bottom. Then I'm going to put my two cards face down in front of me, and then once everyone's ready, Deanna and I, we're going to flip them, and that sets my initiative at 23, which is a little initiative tracker, which I think I'm going to put on the box right here. Not that I think anyone can read them. And then Deanna is going to do the same. And Deanna suggests, and again, we can swatch this, mm -hmm. Blinding, Sickle, and Shocking Advance. Blinding, Sickle, and Shocking Advance. And pick advance. whichever one for your initiative. Which would be these All right, so, so you're going to do those. Your initiative would be 14, so you would be before me. And then the monster is at 50. So this is another thing that is not, sorry, is not in Gloomhaven at all. And I just bumped the camera. Sorry, people. So that is something that did not exist in the original game to keep track of initiative, which it's, I guess it's a nice touch. So you can always quickly look over. But man, those are tiny. Like that, that's a little. Look at my fingers bigger than these things. So that's your suggestion. So next we'll go through the anatomy of a card. At this point, you just have the top. It always says A. And then it explains your ability. Now what we have in this version of the game is blue text that literally tells you what they mean. So it tells you exactly what all this means if it's not clear. 
The other thing they've done to improve the clarity in this game is they have separated separate actions by dotted lines now. So that is a grammatical improvement over the original game. So with this ability, I would move three as one action and then muddle as a second. So if things modified one action, it would only modify the top, for example. Whereas all of this other ability is another, so I would move two, then strengthen. So I can't strengthen first. I have to complete the first, then the second. So that's what the dot, dot, dots mean. So that explains initiative. Uh, movement, we are just going to move a number of hexes equal to what says move. We can move through allies. Again, we play Bloomhaven, so this is repetitive for us. Uh, attack shows this little sword symbol. So this is an attack four card. I will modify that with a random draw from my deck, which actually I would have did times two, so eight. I should have saved that for once we started playing. So that would have been an eight damage attack. You can only attack adjacent unless... You have the ranged symbol. So here's an example of an attack with ranged. So again, this time, note there is no dotted line, which means the word ranged applies to the word above it. So again, they've greatly improved the clarity of the cards in this version of Gloomhaven. And it's something I'm looking forward to seeing in Frosthaven as well. So this one is a little special because it actually has other people do it. But this is an attack two at range three. Um, so then when you do attack, we're going to flip over one of our modifier cards. These decks are kind of, think of your D20 and D&D. There is a times two, but once you draw this card, you have to reshuffle your deck at the end of the turn. There is a miss, which is an automatic miss, and then there are all kinds of, anything from plus two to minus two, with a favoring towards plus zero and plus one. Are oh, there's no minus twos? Yeah, one plus one, one, one plus two, one minus two. I think it's four plus ones, four minus ones, five minus ones, and five plus ones, and a bunch of plus zeros. That's the basic deck that everyone has. The monsters also have a deck that is exactly the same. So that's the monsters, the Vermlings deck. So what we need to do is shuffle all of those. There is a system of advantage and disadvantage. The only time that should come up in this fight is if you attack someone in ranged next to them in dis is. Uh, you have disadvantage if you're next to them. You would draw two cards and use the worst of the two. Advantage is you attack and draw two cards and use the best of the two. Uh, the only way to get advantage that I know of in this is if one of our cards grants advantage. Or we have the strengthen buff. Which brings us to conditions. In this particular scenario, there are only four different conditions that can happen. Immobilize, which means you can't move. Stun, which means you don't go at all. Muddle, which gains disadvantage, and Strengthen, which gives your attack advantage. Just making sure the decks are all nice and shuffled up. Um, that's pretty much it. So what it tells you to do now is play through until you get to Initiative 50, because we don't know what the monsters are going to do. So we are going to pick our two cards, and we're going to take our two actions, which I'm going to repick. I don't want to go with. We could yeah, go with the cards they said. Guess what the monsters do. Yeah, well, we know what the monsters are going to do, because they don't have cards. Now, we are allowed to discuss what we're doing, but we can't talk about specific numbers. Like, you can say, I'm going to go pretty fast, but you can't say, I have initiative 14. Range 3. You said to put the initiative one in the bottom? Yes. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna smack this guy in hand to hand. Thank you. If you could also smack him, we could probably take him out the first round. And I've noticed that these guys move pretty slow. They only have moved they only have one. one. So without not cards, be rushing us. yeah. Without cards, they're not gonna be. Obstacles don't block line of sight for Correct. the same thing. So that is the other thing we can do is we have a glossary. So if you want to look up obstacles while I decide what to do, you could read off what obstacles say. So it's just an alphabetical order. Though they did already explain that obstacles don't really do much. much covered it, but but yes.
Obstacle hexes are surrounded by a green border on the scenario map. A single border contains a single obstacle, which may make up more than one hex. Obstacle. Obstacles cannot be moved through unless the movement is modified by jump. And there's a little jump icon. If an obstacle is destroyed, place destruction tokens on every hex the obstacle occupied. An obstacle hex containing a destruction token is considered empty and can then be moved through normally. Oh, I should have taken the attack. No, that's fine. Could have. Could have. Alright, I am going to take these two cards. Ooh, except it's slow. Actual strategy being required. It's terrible. I'm going to assume you are going to finish off that. I'm going to hit it, but I, I think you should also hit it. Well, they only have five health. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. It's not just this. We add the card to it. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when I don't play Gloomhaven for five months. I just want to move. Okay. We're going to do that. All right. So there. Lots of planning and thinking. Sorry. Maybe we'll speak at Sean to speed that up too. <laughs> uh, so we explained advantage, disadvantage. Um, if you have anything that says target with a circle on it, um, you can attack more than one thing. And now here is one of the biggest changes from Gloomhaven to this one. Line of sight now is if you can draw a line from any part of the targeting hex to any part of the target hex without touching a wall, you have line of sight. Hmm. So that is a big change from the original. Okay. So I can see like the entire board from where I'm standing. Get Probably. All right, so we are going to flip ours. I am at 23. 14. So it is going to be you, then me, then the bots, bad guys. So you're going to go first. So you're going to have to I think, hold your card somewhat to the camera. Yep. Just anywhere in here will work. Okay. Like you basically so... can see this whole board. I'm going to use this as my movement, and I'm going to move one, two, three, four. So when Deanna does an action, she chooses if she wants to use the top or the bottom of her card. And then when she gets to her second card, she has to use the opposite. So now, on this card, I will use the attack, which will be an attack three, which will also mobilize. Which the blue text just describes that, correct? And it's a swing and a miss. Did you, sh <laughs> did you shuffle? One adjacent enemy suffers three damage plus modifier and cannot move until the end of its next turn. Yeah, it's just an oversimplified uh, Yeah. So one of the things that happens in Gloomhaven is that status effects happen whether or not you actually hit. So that is monster number five. We marked that he has been immobilized. And then the discarded cards go to the The discard left. cards go to the left of your board, which okay. people can't actually see. Yeah. So Tech in our chat room is asking how it's going. We're literally just starting, but we're doing this as kind of as an intro video for someone who's never played Gloomhaven or seen Jaws of the Lion. So we're spending more time than usual explaining what we're doing and how the rules work and what the cards actually say on them. So we're kind of almost doing this basically as a teach and play. Like I think pretty sure once we put this on YouTube, it'll say learn to play as well as. So no damage there, so I do mine. So my first one, this is interesting, is I have suggestion. It says... No, I'm doing the wrong one. Sorry. Wicked Scratch. One ally within range two. You're no longer within range two. So we're going to move first. So I'm going to start by moving three using suggestion. One, two, three. And then I muddle something within range three. So move up to three hexes. Then one enemy within three hexes gains disadvantage on all its attacks. Well, the only person I can see is this one. So we're going to muddle him as well. So he gets a little question mark on him. What were you going to do to me? I'm getting there. And then we're going to use Wicked Scratch, which is one ally within range two, performs an attack four. Ooh. I'm assuming I use my yes. own deck? So Must you hit him for three. So I hit him for three. I had to reshuffle my deck. Cause oh, this, this we didn't put out. This is actually supposed to go. It's the same height as the book. Board, book. Oh. Ooh. So he has taken three now. And get this gets to one of my complaints about Gloomhaven overall, is tracking monster stats is kind of annoying. 
I gotta say. <laughs> Gloomhaven help her out this nice. Yes. Yeah. So now it is the monster's turn. So now we stop and we return to the monster's turn. So one of the things that it notes is that the Void Walker gets the ability to grant other people actions. We got to see that. Um, if something says self, it can, is the only way to target yourself. Now on the monster's turn, so on 50 they act. So what is going to happen is all of the Vermling act. The gold or elite monster is going to go first. And what it's going to do is pick a target. It is going to look at the... It can only attack in melee, so it's going to find the person it can reach in the shortest distance and actually hit, which is, of course, you. Then it's going to move their movement, which right now is only one. Then, these are numbered. We are going to find the lowest number. I have a five, a two, and... Six. Six. So two is also going to move up closer. And then five can already see both of us. Now, it has two people it can attack, so it's going to attack whoever had the lowest initiative. So we look over here and go, that is the red guard. That would be me. And then we are going to flip over the top deck, and it's going to attack for a big two plus zero. So two damage, you know, let's put this here so people can see what I drew. And, and what Deanna is going to do now is she is going to spin her wheel down too. And that is all of the bad guys. So now... We are going to go to the next turn. So monster focus in this game is different from the other one. It's whoever it can actually reach, so it's not the closest. So I don't have a good example based on what's set up here, but it's all based this, on this wall right here. So I so right if you were here, here close. If you were here, no. If you were here, and there was a bag, and someone was here, right? So in the old game, you'd be two away. So they'd focus on this right. character, whereas this is three away. They would go for this character because they would have to go all the way around to hit this one. Yeah, so that's, that's why I brought that Yeah, up. that's one of the changes that they've, they've made. Um, monster attacks one. So now, character damage and exhaustion. You have taken any. If you get knocked to zero, you would be exhausted and you would end. So now it's the end of the round. So first thing we need to do is check and see if anyone flipped up one of those symbols that shows re reshuffle your deck, which you should be able to show that off. I Except he already did. shuffled my deck already, and then and then cheated because you, I didn't know you were going to make me well, go. Yeah, you cheated. So I did. I shuffled my Deanna, deck already. Deanna, you're supposed to play according to what the rules say. Uh, I shuffled my deck already. Cheating, totally terrible. So now wants us to play two rounds, two more rounds. So we are going to take our hand of cards, which should be down to four. Two more rounds because then we'll be out of cards. Yeah, exactly. So I said you're jumping ahead. I'm sorry. How much damage did you take? Two? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm fine. I'm pretty buff. Okay, I am ready. But I'm slow. Ready, yeah. but slow. Me too. Wicked Scratch sounds like a Boston attack. Alright, I'm good to go. Alright, so reveal yours. 38. So 38. I am at 89. Whoa, you and well, they so. are at 50. So we're going to rearrange a little stack of... Wouldn't 89 be after 50? Yeah. Oh, you're the gray one. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They are awfully tiny. I can't see that from across. Yeah, they're tiny. They're, they're a little... It's neat that they did something for initiative, but that's almost uselessly small. Mm-hmm. All right. As long as one person watches, I guess. Well, I am going to use my twirling stabs with the bottom to oh, attack... Oh, I figured you would leave him alone attack because he's two, so feeble. Attack him. But this is my move action, technically. Oh, okay, cool. Show people the card. Uh, I, I did. Okay, no, I meant the card you're and flipping up. Plus one, so... So three damage? Three damage. That kills this Vermling. We have a dead Vermling. We just remove him from the board. And then, my Flaming Sickle, which is a ranged attack. So I will... I have range two, and this fellow's right here. So yep. I will attack him for three, plus zero... So just three. We're going to take this three back and put it on number one. Which, being a gold, he has more yes. hit points. So now the monsters go. I'll let you do the monster AI this time. All right. Well, the monster is going to... The gold one will go first, so it'll see me. It'll scoot up one, and it will attack me. Yep. 
and it attacks for two Correct. plus zero, so I take another two. So I spin this down to six. And this monster is the lowest number left mm -hmm. on the board. It will scoot up one. And this one... We, you must have put it back in the wrong I, spot. You know what? We were fiddling with it, and I think it, yeah, because it should have moved twice by now. Yep. There you go. Where's the move in to catch us moving the monsters? Wrong. We didn't move it at all last turn. We stopped at five because five oh, okay. attacked, and then we there never we got to eight. I'm trying to turn it so you can actually see the standees. Actually, the angle might have been better. I went for more top down for mm -hmm. the book because but, but with the with the standees, it might have actually been yeah. easier to see on a bit of an angle. So that might be something to consider for so our that's next it one. For the bad guys. It's all right, turn. so we are starting off with what do I want to start with? Let's start with lure of the void. I tempt the Vermling with the Void, which befuddles its mind and stuns it. One enemy within three hexes cannot perform any actions until the end of its next turn. So I stun the Elite One. I, I like that it's the Elite One that you stun. And then I give Gift of the Void and call the Void in and have it seal your wounds so and heal soothing. you for two. Soothing Void. And, and that goes in my discard pile, and we start the next round. Again, double check to make sure we don't have any recycle, reshuffles. Shouldn't be hard to pick which cards to go this time. No, but you still have to order. That's true. Yeah, it even points out things like, for example, when using range, that it has disadvantage if you're adjacent. That's really nice. What's odd is that they, I know this having looked ahead, that they pulled these off the later cards. And why not just keep it? Like, I realize it's a little ugly with some blue text on it, but why not keep that such clarity on the cards? All right, I am going at 49. And I am going at 41. So, it, they go last. You are definitely quicker than I am. So... I think what I'm going to do is, even though I have to move four, I don't have to take all four of the movement. I'm just going to move one, two, so that I'm adjacent to both of these guys. And then I'm going to use my shield spikes. Two adjacent enemies suffer two damage, period. Nice. No attack modifier card is drawn. So that's number one and... Two. Okay, getting these out of here is slightly annoying. I will quickly be switching to a bowl, I think, for these. Alright. That's it? That's it. Alright, I am going to start with a move four. I am using Black Boon. I think I'll just stay there. And then I turn out the lights. I attack range three. Do we want to try to finish him off, probably? Mm-hmm. That's our best bet. That's a good idea. All right. So I hit for three. And he's already And he's at two. for two, so that kills him. He's done. All right. Now we're out of cards. What happens? So now that we have completed two further rounds, we need to learn about short rests. At the end of your third round, all six of your cards are done. You can get these back by short resting. So what we will do is we'll take all our cards into our hand, we will shuffle, and we'll pull one random one out that we lose for the rest of the match. And if we don't like which one we lost, we can spend one help. Yeah. And it goes on the right-hand side of our board into the lost pile. Oh no, I have lost my flaming sickle. Now, given enough room rounds, we will run out of cards. And if that happens, we become exhausted. If both of us become exhausted, we lose the match. We didn't have the bad guys go. We're Shoot. We're cheating here. We really are. Wow. Oh, that's pretty bad. Let's Sorry. back it up. Let's back it up. So the elite one does not go because it's stunned. The other one moves one. There you go. There. I just forgot to actually and do you that. Killed the, and you killed them. Now, I had thought about the fact they weren't going to be doing much, but yeah, you still I have to make them do it. forgot to actually move them. All right. So now... So now uh, there is the, the, the thing we are worried about running out of cards. But other than that, 
We just have to defeat these two guys before we run out of cards. Two folk, two firmly. Well, I'll finish up this fellow if you go worry about them. Well, so. what I plan on doing is stunning that other one so it just can sit there. That sounds lovely. Um, and, oh, if I could go, I'm so slow. I was gonna just buff you up, but it won't buff you till next round. So I think I will buff you for next round. But you can still use some more healing, right? I am still wounded, yes. All right, we'll do that. No, I'm gonna buff you for next round. I think yeah, that's I'm not more that wounded. Like I'm feeling yeah. pretty good. So far, this is an interesting character with the I. That's just other people. All right, I am ready at sixty-seven, which is definitely after the monsters. And I'm at fourteen. So you go first. So at 14, first I'm going to attack this guy with a shocking advance. Which this time hits for four. Is that enough to finish him off? He is at five plus four puts him at nine. No. Oh, he's immobilized. And then since I didn't finish him off, I will use my twirling stabs to attack him for two more. Three more. He's now done. he is done. And that's my turn. All right, this is looking tight. I don't know if we're going to make it. So we will start by the bad guy going. <laughs> he will advance one. Too scary. I will start by stunning him, which I just put the silly stun token away, and I shouldn't have. What number? Eight. Eight? It can't be. Six, sorry. So that is Lure of the Void, the top power. And then I move two. I'm backing up. I'll let you fight this. And I strengthen you. Which? Gives you, so there is a spot on your character card to track those. You get advantage on your next attack. And then those two cards go in my discard. We really probably should have had one of our things on camera just to show that off. The wow. two, no, the, the two sides of the board, yeah. right? Well, the so this cards go here, your lost cards go here, and the active cards go at the top, and condition tokens. And the items bottom. go at the bottom. It shows yeah. not that we have items at the moment. Okay, so I am buffed, and we are going to decide what to do for next turn. I don't remember what advantage gives. Oh, you draw extra cards, yeah. right? I am set. I am also set. All right, 23. I think it's as fast as I can go. 41. Hey, I actually go first. All right, we are going to start off with a suggestion, which has a range of three and I move two. I don't need to move anywhere. I'm happy where I am. So I make a, an obscene suggestion to this rat man which totally confuses him and he is now muddled oh he's stunned anyway so that was actually pointless mm -hmm. um which would give him disadvantage on his next attack and then i heal you three more because right well i am full up i don't have much else to do i am definitely a support character yeah um okay well i am going to uh use the range attack with my blinding sickle to attack and immobilize, so he won't be going anywhere. Again, it won't matter because he's done this round. Oh, and he's going to go after me, so yeah. he would wear it off. Oh, well. Should have um, went slow. That would have oh, been way better. Four, but because I have advantage, I'm going to draw twice. Yes. And the two is the best answer, so I will hit him for four. All right. Yeah, you should have used the other initiative. Then you the would have actually initiative and went after him. Yes. Yeah, I did. I screwed that up. Play. Yep, Terrible. and then for my second part, I was going to heal myself. But you're fully healed. But I'm fully healed because you healed me. We're so. not talking about the cards. Yep. And we can't go next oh, round. No, I so we must short that. rest. So we keep the card in our hand. No, no, oh, no. Yeah, keep the card in your hand. Shuffle your discard pile. And lose a card. No more twirly stabs. I feel like there's not any one of these I would be so upset to lose right now that I would 
um, digital health support. Do you agree, or are there cards there that you would pay to keep? No, they're all exclusive. Fourteen. Well, in this case, I want to make sure I go before the bad guy because I'm going to do the blinding sickle and immobilize him again. Why not? Oh, if you do even one damage, it's over. Right, and I do zero, but he's oh. mobilized. <laughs> sure, making this as I long no as possible. I have, have this. This was until the end of my round, right? Yes. Yeah. And then he's immobilized. I could move up. To hit him next but then he'll, time, but then hit, he'll you. be able to hit me. Yeah, uh, I can just stay where I am. Okay. Yeah. Which is good because I don't know if he moved up, it wouldn't be bad either. One ally within range three may perform attack two at range three with the lure oh, of the void. A ranged attack. Yes, gift of the void. Nice. So. Can't show it over here. Which one does one. one damage, which is enough to kill him. Dun, dun, dun. Ta-da! We have killed the last Vermin. Why are you taking off the bases? Because uh, they're done. Alright, so now we read the conclusion. We did not fail, so we don't have to look up failing in scenario. I gotta say, compared to scenario one of Gloomhaven, yes. scenario one of Gloomhaven took I about four tries. I tried multiple times. Yeah, it took, yeah. took us, I think, three tries. I had heard ahead of time. This was much more easy. You wipe the blood of the last vermling from your face, and your thoughts return to the sleeping lion. Surely they've got a stew ready by now. Be so peace, perfectly warm and soothing. It's right through that gate, so close you can already taste it. Mm. But then another thought it comes. It's highly unusual, brazen really, for a pack of vermlings to operate this close to the city. Could they be behind the string of disappearances? It's a long shot, but one worth investigating, especially considering this ambush site doesn't look like their base of operations. There's probably a nest somewhere nearby. With any luck, we'll have information on the blacksmith. And treasure. Treasure would be really nice. Good. New location, a hole in the wall, number two. So we will put this away. We'll keep this here. Or we can close it. Now yeah, we can close it. And we will pull out the Gloomhaven map. So it's interesting to note, both story-wise and for people who know the full game, we have not gotten in the town yet, <laughs> which is part of why we can't do some of the things you could normally do in Gloomhaven by this point. All right, sticker set. Oh, the other thing. So one of the things we should do is we should mark off that we completed the first scenario. Wait a minute. Strengthen is advantage on all attacks you remove at the end of next turn. So I could have technically used it twice. No, it's the end of your next turn. Okay, it's You've just the way they were next here. turn. I'm like. So we have number two, where you're getting close to the walls of Gloomhaven. So the other thing we should do is grab a dry, a wet, dry erase, wet erase, whatever, a marker, a per sharpie. A permanent one. Permanent. I missed where it said to put this. B1. Why am I not seeing it? Because there's a path. Yeah, there's like a path that's been added to the map, which is what's throwing me off. Oh, it's so close. Including mm -hmm. stickers, things, kind of. It looks like you got it. Possibly better than I did earlier. So yes, if you look, there's now a path yeah, leading neat. up to the wall. So That's we do cool. have to mark off. We have completed this. So we actually go and we you didn't get a marker that worked. But. No, it's a permanent marker. All right, so we have completed one. So now one of the advantages of the Gloomhaven series of games 
is we're still going to do a couple things. Okay, it's going to explain this in a second. So we put it up. So it should match up with the art. Because we did scenario one, we do mark off scenario one that's complete. We cannot replay it. We do fully refresh. So we reset our hit points, which I didn't take any damage. We get all, sorry, all our cards back to our box. And now we are going to unlock a character sheet. So in our box, oh, can you grab pencils too, please? Maybe. So each character in here, I'm surprised it's not as thick as the ones in Gloomhaven. You can play through this multiple times, I guess. I don't know. There's There are multiple character sheets here. So I now have a chance, one last chance to swap characters, but I'm happy with who I'm playing. We've now done well enough. We should care about our characters. We can name them. So I now have Telemathis, the human Void Warden. And we're also going to mark off that we are level 1. So you are going to X off your level 1 box. Now we upgrade. So this is something special to this scenario. We are going to grab our pack of cards again. And we are going to grab the two Bs. And what's interesting is the Bs are better versions of two of the As. So what we're going to do is find the A's that match. So I now have a better Wicked Scratch card and a better Lure of the Void card. Or at least more complicated. I don't know about better. <laughs> so they then take Wicked Scratch and Lure of the Void. It doesn't say to destroy them, though I'm tempted. <laughs> but if anyone ever wants to play this character again. And then we're going to return these to the back of the bag because we never need these A cards again. So I'm just going to throw those to the back of my box. So you'll note that later on I'm probably going to unlock more cards because i got a nice like, oh. huge thick. Yes, so th it, this is going to add more rules to this. So I have added a loot card, plus I now have a card I can burn. So that's the two. You probably also have a card you can burn. No? No burn card. So I gained a burn card. So I have a really powerful attack six, but I have the cards gone if I use it. But again, we're still limited to only six cards. So again, that's a change from the original Gloomhaven because depending on what character class you played, you had like 9 to 12 cards, or 9 to 11 cards. All right, so at this point, we can save the game. So there you go. That was scenario one of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. At this point, we have completed it. We've gotten to the first point. If we wanted to save the game, what we would do is we would grab one of the baggies, and we would put the stuff that's still us. So are the baggies big enough to fit these? No. It said use a baggie, but then put the baggie in your box. No, they won't fit these big cards, not unless I... No, that won't actually Absolutely. fit in there. Oddly, they say use a baggie, but I assume they're meaning the baggies that come with the cards. Yeah. Or you could have it sticking out the top of a baggie, whatever. Whatever. But they, they do they do suggest using a baggie, which is an odd choice. So what they say is uh, put everything back in the box to continue. So at this point, you continue reading to the next page and keep playing. Most important thing, put all the mini heroes currently pertinent to your character. Character sheet, character Mac, attack modifier deck, and hand of six cards into the zip bag with your character tokens and initiative order token. Then put them into your character box. So I get the requirement to do that, but again, the, that doesn't actually fit. there's some component quality issues here because that character sheet's not going to fit in there either. Well, you can fold the character sheet, but yeah. But that's kind of silly. Again, um, Cephal Affair. You got a tray here that doesn't fit all the tokens, and you tell me to put stuff in a bag that doesn't fit. That's a little disappointing. I have baggies. I can find baggies. I can sort my cards. It's fine. Or you just, like you did it just... Or just do this. The, the but then I can't put the character the sheet in and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it wants you to put your modifier deck in, mm -hmm. and uh, where are the initiative tokens? And your initiative token. Yeah. But we're not actually saving, so that is what we would do next. So the next time you play, you would just open it up, grab your box, and grab your stuff, and keep going. Then you'd look on your map and go, oh, we're going to number two. Simple enough. So uh, if you do have any questions, make sure you uh, put them in the comments below. For those of you who joined us live, thank you very much. Uh, we are going to continue on to scenario two, but I'm going to have to do some work in between to get things set up. Say, are you going to stop the video? Yeah, I'm going to stop the video, start a new video. Uh, 
For those of you watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ding that bell. By dinging the bell, even if you subscribe, you don't always get notified on everything we do, which is kind of silly on YouTube spot. You've got to hit the bell to actually get notified on everything we live, we post. So that would be awesome if you hit that thumbs up this video. If you don't like it, thumbs down, but please tell us why so we can improve on any future videos. Uh, for Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. And I'm Deanna. Good night and game on. Game on.